It's um, such an honor to be here. Thank you. Um, the book is 12 short stories, all from different perspectives, uh, all related to the war in Iraq. Uh, I'm going to read you the opening of a story called Bodies, which is about a Marine who did mortuary affairs, uh, prepared the bodies to be sent home, among other things. For a long time, I was angry. I didn't want to talk about Iraq, so I wouldn't tell anyone that I'd been. And if people knew, if they pressed, I'd tell them lies. There was this Haji corpse, I'd say, lying in the sun. It'd been there for days, it was swollen with gases. The eyes were sockets, and we had to clean it off the streets. Then I'd look at my audience and size them up, see if they wanted me to keep going. You'd be surprised how many do. That's what I did, I'd say. I collected remains. U.S. forces mostly, but sometimes Iraqis, even insurgents. There are two ways to tell the story. Funny or sad. Guys like it funny with lots of gore and a grin on your face when you get to the end. Girls like it sad with a thousand yard stare out to the distance as you gaze upon the horrors of war they can't quite see. Either way, it's the same story. This lieutenant colonel is visiting the government center, rolls up, sees two marines maneuvering around a body bag, and decides he'll go show what a regular guy he is and help. As I tell the story, the lieutenant colonel is a large, arrogant bear of a man with fresh pressed camis and a short, tight mustache. He's got huge hands, I'd say. And he comes up to us and he says, here, Marine, let me help you with that. And without waiting for us to respond or warn him off, he reaches down and grabs the body bag. Then I describe how he launches up as though he's doing a clean and jerk. He was strong. I'll give him that, I'd say. But the bag rips on the edge of the truck's back gate and the skin of the haji tears with it, a big jagged tear through the stomach. Rotting blood and fluid and organs slide out like groceries through the bottom of a wet paper bag. Human soup. Hits him right in the face, running down his mustache. If I'm telling the story sad, I can stop there. If I'm telling it funny, though, there's one more crucial bit, which Corporal G had done when he told the story to me for the first time, back in 2004, before either of us had collected remains or knew what we were talking about. I don't know where G heard the story. The colonel screamed like a bitch, G had said. And then he'd made a weird high-pitched keening noise deep in his throat like a wheezing dog. <laughs> this was to show us precisely how bitches scream when covered in rotting human fluids. If you get the noise right, you get a laugh. What I liked about the story was that even if it had happened, more or less, it was still total bullshit. After our deployment, there wasn't anybody, not even Corporal G, who talked about the remains that way. Some of the mortuary affairs Marines thought the spirits of the dead hung about the bodies. It creeped them out. You could feel it, they'd say, especially when you look at the faces. But it got to be more than that. Midway through the deployment, guys started swearing they could feel the spirits everywhere. Not just around the bodies, and not just Marine dead. Sunni dead, Shia dead, Kurd dead, Christian dead. All the dead of all Iraq, even all the dead of all Iraqi history, the Akkadian Empire, the Mongols, and the American invasion. I never felt any ghosts. Leave a body in the sun, the outer layer of skin detaches from the lower, and you feel it slide around in your hands. Leave a body in water, everything swells, and the skin feels waxy and thick, but recognizably human. That's all. Except for me and Corporal G, though, everybody in Mortuary Affairs talked about ghosts. We never said any different. Thank you. <laughs>